Good day, my friends. May you all be blessed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And then you say, Bishop, how can I be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? How? If my entire life has been a devastated life, a devastating life destroyed, I didn't ask to come to the world, but the world did not give me a welcome. Nonetheless, the world has punished me, has made me cry day and night without ceasing. So I'd like to know how can I be blessed by God? What is the secret for, the, for us to be blessed by God? What's the secret for us to achieve, to reach God? Because His holy, purest, and we are full of sins. How do we communicate with Him? How will we enter His presence? Very well, my friends. Be joyful. Rejoice. Because we are going to share a tip on how God attends to people. See that God, He permits, God permits us to pass. He permits us to pass through challenging moments in life in order for us to humble ourselves and call upon Him with sincerity so that He may attend to us. This is why the Holy Scripture, the Biblical Scripture reads the following. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, which means the eyes of God passes over, it runs over your house, your life, regardless of who you are, whether you are religious or not. It doesn't matter whether you're a Catholic, a spiritist, a spiritist or Muslim, Buddhist, a Jew, it doesn't matter. What matters is the following. The eyes of the Lord runs over your house. It runs over your life. But He will only show Himself strong. He will only show Himself powerful. He will only show Himself mighty to those whose hearts are, whose hearts are loyal to Him. Bishop, I can't comprehend this. How will we have a perfect heart as God wants if we were born in imperfection? If we were born in an imperfect life, how will I have a perfect heart? That's impossible. No, my friend. God does not ask anything which cannot be attended. When he says a perfect heart in my vision and my faith, I know that God will not find a perfect heart anywhere. However, the perfect heart God is seeking is not the perfection of holiness which we live. No. Perfection in heart, the loyal heart, he sees and those who aspire for justice, those who love justice, those who, although they live in sin, still the heart is inclined to want what is right, what is righteous, what is correct. This is the perfect heart. It's as Jesus said, blessed or happy are those who hunger and thirst for justice. These have a perfect heart. The perfect heart is for you to want what is just, is for you to desire justice, is for you to fight for justice, is for you to walk in, in, in righteousness, because God is righteousness, He's just. The throne of God is composed by justice. 
So he seeks for people who love justice, who want justice, who strive for justice. These are the people of a perfect heart before God, a loyal heart. And when a person has a heart, which we could say, we could call it perfect, to want justice, so justice itself, who is God, comes to meet with you to satisfy your hunger, to quench your thirst. This is a perfect heart before God. He knows all of us have mistakes, we commit mistakes. But there is a great difference between those who live and enjoy sin and those who are in sin but do not want to live in sin. They want to leave sin. They want to abandon sin. They want to live in righteousness. Here's the difference, my friends. So the eyes of God are upon you right now, this moment. It is searching your heart. If you are a person who enjoys sin, so then his eyes just go through. He's really not bothered. He's not bothered with you. However, if you are that person who suffers, who groans, even if you're a sinner, you are that person who is suffering. But in the depth of your heart, in the depth of your heart, there is a flame, a desire. You aspire for justice, for righteousness. You get irritated. You are, you have an indignation because of the injustices, the, the injustices you see daily, you witness daily on the news. Is it not so? You have an indignation when you see people stealing, stealing and stealing and they're free. Whilst others who steal a banana at a flea market, they are in prison. That's the reality. So these injustices make us to suffer. My God, until when will this happen? Until when? Come on, this is impossible. It's not possible. The thieves who are dressed up, pretenders, they are doing well. And those who shame, they live in misery. They are living a miserable lives. And they're even good people, but God, my friend, listen well, listen carefully. God is justice. Sooner or later, His eyes will run over those who want justice and He will shine His light upon the lives of these people and He changes their lives. You can verify, friends, that the Word of God is a word which forms the character of God in us. This is the reality. It has nothing to do with religion, but it has to do with the intelligent faith, the rational faith, the faith which weighs, which thinks, which reasons. So, because of the truth which hurts, which oppose religions, so a person obviously or the media, obviously, which is dominated by religion, they see themselves jeopardized. So it then persecutes those who go against their faith or their religion. Look, I'd like you to know, friends, that in the Universal Church, we prioritize the truth. We prioritize the truth. We work with the truth. It's very true that those who prefer the kiss of a lie don't like the truth. But those who prefer the slap of truth, when it reaches them, they set free because they get to know the truth which sets free. It's a fact. The facts are there. The facts are there. It's not me. I'm not the one who has knowledge, my friends. The logic, knowledge is not mine, it's the knowledge from the Word of God. It's of God, it's of the Spirit of God. 
but it's the truthful truth. It's not with pretend, pretending or with cosmetics or the makeup. No, it's the truth which sets free, which hurts because it opposes the desires of the person. It opposes the person's will, but it solves. The medicine is, it's bitter, it's bitter. The truth is bitter in the mouth, but when it reaches the stomach, it solves the problem. This is the reality. Or do you prefer a sweet medicine which does not work? It all depends on you. You choose. You make the choice of your life. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, everything is possible for, her, for him. What would be impossible without the Holy Spirit when he receives the Holy Spirit becomes possible. Perhaps you are this person whom for a while or your entire life you've been waiting on someone. You've been counting on someone, hoping in someone. You've been counting on someone's help. Look, my friends, let's think carefully. If the Spirit of God possesses you, you will count on no one else. You won't be depending on anyone. You will count on yourself and above all, the Spirit which is inside of you. And this is the reason for the services of Wednesdays in the Universal Church, specifically for people to receive the Holy Spirit and in order for them to produce, to reinvent themselves and do that which the Holy Spirit will guide them. So you, friends, who desire to overcome in life, you need a partner. You need a person who will be guiding you 24 hours a day. This person is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. Look, if the Lord Jesus, let's be honest, if the Lord Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to overcome even death, Imagine us. So, this is the faith. 